Well, apparently I'm live. Hi, everybody. Um, Stacy, personally speaking, still in Japan. Um, it has been a long time since I have posted a video or anything um, with respect to YouTube. But, and I'm doing this live because if I attempt to make a video and then, you know, do all the editing and so on, I'm going to take a really long time or I probably won't do this video at all. So I decided I would just go live and just talk about what I experienced today and what I have been experiencing for the past few weeks um, with the sudden passing of a Jamaican in Japan. Today was the funeral service and it was... Uh, there was a lot of support. The experience was just very different. And I'm not going to make this too long, but I think there are some important things that I want us to take away from this. Um, so, yeah, the person, as I said, was Jamaican. They had been living in Japan for a number of years, longer than me, and I have been here for six years and counting um you know the passing was sudden and that is the part that always gets us we all know we're going to die you know but you know just that that sudden unexpected passing that really really gets gets us gets me so last sunday we had a candle lighting ceremony also well supported you know a lot of persons co-workers um friends came and gave support you know and um we just yeah we um not just jamaicans but of course other um nationalities as well who worked with the person and then you know the experience today we had a funeral service for one hour, it's all black, just full black for ja Japanese funerals. It's like a formal event. Um, females are supposed to wear full black, the men full black suits with a white shirt inside, you know. So, of course, we're learning all these things and just the, the process, you know. It was a bit of a fusion of Jamaican and Japanese style funeral. Um, it wasn't done at a church. It was done at a funeral home where we we had a bit of a, a program, but it was for one hour. And when we say one hour, we mean one hour. You know, we had songs, hymns, um, eulogy, tributes. Um, we laid roses, you know, it was well, beautifully um organized by a fellow Jamaican. Um, the family joined live via Zoom. Um, so there, there was no family member involved in the planning process here in Japan on the ground. You know, it was just friends and um, her previous job. And so after, so we thought, so there was a casket and we thought that, you know, the Japanese style is cremation. So we thought the crematorium was at the same place, but it wasn't at the same place. It was actually somewhere else, um, a cemetery place that we had to, to go. But it was really well organized and um, persons had the option of joining us at the crematorium or, you know, leaving. Um, my pastor for the church that I attended actually gave us a sermonette, um, but he wasn't able to stay because today is Sunday, you know, and um, he had to get to church, which I didn't go today, as you can imagine. Um, so church, the, the service ended on time and we organized ourselves to go to the crematorium, we left out between 12.35 
um, from the funeral home and we drove in a little, I don't remember what we call it in Jamaica, parade, something. But we didn't use our flashers, um, you know, but it was about five or six cars plus the, the one with the casket. And um, we went, it was, we were just directed to exactly where we needed to go. And um, so we went and, uh, wow, yeah, um, I said a few words, sang another song right by the casket there just before they put it into the furnace. It just became so real, you know? But it's like everything for them is just so structured and so systematic. Right after that was done and they put the box in and they closed the furnace and they ushered us into another building up onto the third floor. And, you know, they presented us with menus for food. And I'm like, wow, for real? Like, um, who is thinking about food at this time? But, you know, eventually, because we had to wait for about an hour, up to a, an hour and a half. Um, and by this time, it was already after one minutes to two in the afternoon. You know, so eventually... I started and I'm like, hey, mango juice. I'm going to get mango juice. And suddenly uh, more persons wanted uh, mango juice and something to drink. And then, you know, we ordered some food because the truth is a lot of us probably hadn't eaten or, you know, we were out from early, you know, because we started, um, we had to get there from like 1030. Um, so, you know, and it was like, Mm, to two after two now so yeah we we really should um get something to eat so we did that um and we were talking you know talking about you know just different things and the main organizer who was really close with her um spoke you know everybody spoke fondly of her so you know you know that that's a good sign you know um you know and just the experience though, you know. We finished eating, they cleared cleared the area, and um, and we went back, we were taken back down into the crematorium area. That was just not normal at all, you know. Um, that was just a different experience. <sighs> Because now there was no box. There was no coffin. There were just bones and ashes. You know, we always say it in Jamaica, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. But we are always putting a body in the ground. And then the bones were so white. It felt so surreal and unreal and... Um, but you know, that, that, if, that wasn't even the hardest part. I don't know. I, I think I'm still trying to process and I'm hoping by talking about it, it will help me to process because this could have been any one of us here living in Japan, especially we who live by ourselves. If you know anything about Japan, a lot of people, foreigners, Jamaicans, you know, we are very small in number you know, we, we don't live near to each other, you know. So it could have happened to any one of us, you know, that you, you collapse or, or something and you're just gone. You, you don't turn up for work, you know, and people are wondering where you are, you know. The staff at the crematorium, they came with their chopsticks and they... You could see they were experienced. They picked out, whew, they picked out all the bones and put them in these little containers. I don't know what I couldn't really like look, look, 
you know, but I, I could understand and observe no one then, you know. And they carefully put out the bone. They searched the ashes for like all the bones and ah, I don't know why, but they um they the the bones for here, like the face and yeah, the throat and like somewhere in the spine there, they put it separately and then all the other bones from here down to the feet were put first. Let's say that they those were put first in the, the urn container thing. And it wasn't finished. Like after that persons, we were invited to get the chopsticks and put the remaining bones in to the larger container. The jaw bones and I don't know. It was it's my first time experiencing this. I don't know. I don't know how to process it, honestly. I don't know how to process it. Um and nobody wanted to go. Nobody wanted to do it. Nobody wanted to do it. And so I, I decided to, to go. And for most, for, 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 for the most part, I've been pretty strong. But like that action, you know, of, of getting the bone and, and putting it into the larger container. That, that was just, it was too much. And I actually started crying at that point. Um, and I was talking Japanese, like, I don't know why, you know, I was like saying goodbye in Japanese and, um, yeah. And then after that, other persons came and, and, but some people just couldn't, couldn't do it at all, you know, and, um, you know, just sharing this experience so that we know and understand that we need to be deliberate. We have to be so deliberate here in this foreign country um you know we have to be deliberate about making and keeping connections because anything can happen and yes we might we might make connections with other foreigners here or even with japanese people here but if they're not your family and something like this happens you're going to need somebody you're going to need another jamaican Let's say you're going to need another Jamaican um, to, to be organizing this and, and, and so on. Of course, the, um, the embassy helped in some sort of way. I, I, am not, I didn't help to organize anything really, but the embassy was a part of the Jamaican embassy. But there was no representative at the ceremony, but they were clearly involved in some of the organizing process along with... Um, the, the um, person's um, former job, very integral in the process, you know, but then that connection with, with somebody back home, you know, it was good. It was good for the family back home to be able to connect with another Jamaican, you know what I mean? So yeah, wherever you are in the world, um, find a community. Um, yeah, take don't don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted at all. You know, put something in place. Never too young. Never too young. You know, anything can happen. Anything can happen. And um, I just want to thank God for hope. You know, as a Christian, I I continue to hold to that hope that even if I die, I will go to heaven to be with God, and that is my hope, whether I'm alive or dead. I have that hope, you know. So, yeah, walk good. Let me say, walk good. Walk good. Be friendly. Be kind to people that you meet. Yeah. Check in with somebody. Check in with somebody, you know. Check in with somebody. Or have somebody check in on you. That is something that we shouldn't take for granted at all. You know. Because it is, it can be very frightening. You know, I told my mom what happened. Um, 
yeah it could be anybody it could be anybody and it was just so sudden you know it was just so sudden so yeah but thank you guys um for tuning in i am not making this long i just wanted to kind of try to process this yeah 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 stacy personally speaking live good with people you never know all right goodbye god bless you